full of compassion, full of love, and you love so perfectly. And we have this hope of eternal salvation through you, Jesus. Pray this all in your name. We thank you again. Amen. Amen. You guys can be seated for now. Uh, Anthony, can you turn the lights on? <laughs> I can't see. Okay. Well, I hope you're all nice and toasty. <laughs> I don't hope that, but you are. Uh, so today is a, a very special day, very special day. Uh, some of you will get to witness your uh, friends, your, your loved ones, um, making a public proclamation for the love of their love for Jesus. And it's just such a wonderful thing that we, each one of us can do that. So today, uh, Casey, why don't you come up here? I told him that there are three lucky guys. Even though everyone is toasty, they're the only ones who gets to be dunked. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Through my life, I've always considered myself a believer. I wasn't raised in a Christian household. As a young child, I grew up in a split home. My mother and father separated when I was five years old. But it was my grandma who was the one person who really showed me at a young age what faith was. I remember praying before each meal and talking about who God was, although I never understood it as a young kid. But those things would stick with me through my life. I credit in large part my grandmother with the seed of faith that she had sown within me at a young age to grow into what I am today. Still, as a young kid, I would not attend church regularly, nor deepen or even pursue a relationship with God. Looking back, I most certainly found complacency and stagnation within my faith. Before I came to Christ, I felt as if I was always dissatisfied, missing something I couldn't put into words. In my high school, I would attend church camps or other activities, and I would return feeling fulfilled, but not take any active steps in pursuing God. Yet when people would ask me if I was a believer, I said yes. But did I really know who God was? No. Did I even know or read my Bible? No. I believed in the Christian religion, but had no deep or meaningful relationship with the Lord. Then I heard the verse spoken by Pastor Alex during a sermon some time ago. Matthew 7, 23. On judgment day, many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. To say that I felt convicted would be an understatement. If I called myself a Christ follower, then I must know God, as Matthew 7.22 says. After that point, about a year and a half ago, things happened in my life that would slowly peel back my lukewarm faith and really show that I did not have a personal relationship with the Lord. At that point, I decided to jump into faith wholeheartedly, and that if I was called to be a Christian, I would need to jump in with both feet, not look back. Alex Yermancheco would take me and disciple me, meeting weekly for months and teaching and dwelling with, uh, within Christ's word. I grew a ton in that time, to say the least. I distinctly remember him saying, Casey, if you keep doing this, you won't be the same person within six months. I'm not sure if I believed him, but as time passed, I hit that point. I knew that God had just begun to work within me. Alex's decision to disciple me would lead to lots of fruitful relationships and fellowships within the members here at the Way Church. Those relationships would only help me grow into the man I am today. All things are a part of God's plan for our lives, and I was led to the Way Church about a year and a half ago. I've met amazing brothers and sisters in Christ, and as I look and reflect on the person I was in the past to the person who I am now, words cannot explain that feeling. All I am left with is thankfulness and praise to God. I look forward to the future and what God has in store for me and my brothers and sisters in faith around me. I pray that God may continually work within me to glorify his name and to do so through my actions and allow me to be a representation of Christ that brings glory to his name, that I may harvest the allotment God has blessed me with, 
and that I may glorify his name in whichever way he deems fit through my ministry, and that he may continually sanctify me and equip me for my future ministry, a future family to help others to continue to seek his unfailing word. These things will remain true for eternity. God's love is unconditional, his will unchanging, and his being everlasting. This verse has always came back to me and was first introduced to me under Alex's discipleship. John 15, 1-4 I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes, and he prunes every branch that produces fruit, so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I in you, just as the branch is unable to produce fruit by itself, unless it remains on the vine. Neither can you, unless you remain in me. Thank you, and glory to God. Amen. Casey, uh, I asked you for two paragraphs. <laughs> My disciple. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, remember the training? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so, Casey... Do you love Jesus? I do. Is it your deepest desire to follow him for the rest of your life? Yes. Do you proclaim today that Jesus is Lord? Yes. Yeah. Louder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Good excuse to buy a new one. <laughs> All right, Ivan. My name is Ivan Chesnikov. My whole life I grew up calling myself a Christian, but I never truly knew Christ. Every Sunday I went to church, but I never remembered a word when I left. I was pursuing the image of a Christian rather than becoming one. I always thought, I'll worry about that later in my life. I began to feel empty and always felt like something was missing in my life. I would pray and it felt like no one was listening. I began reading the Bible and praying every day consistently and started to see growth in myself. I knew the flame was lit, and I had to follow Jesus Christ. My friends and I began encouraging each other in our faith and holding each other accountable. Growing with God as a group was a lot easier. Knowing I have people around me going through the same battles, I would still find moments in my life where I felt lost and distant from God, but I knew I had to trust Him and keep pushing. I feel more and more at ease knowing everything is part of a plan, and my faith in Him gives me peace. This is the best decision I have ever made, and I know having him in my life will give me guidance, strength, joy, and peace. Amen. Now, Ivan, you have a few inches on Casey, so... Uh, <laughs> Ivan, you said that you're not interested in being called a Christian. You want to be called a Christ follower. Is that true? Yes. So as Christ leads you, are you, are you ready? Are you willing to follow him for the rest of your life, whatever he tells you to do? I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Yes. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I gotcha. Proud of you, man. Proud of you. Hi, my name is Brian Ayala. Growing up, I always felt God's presence in my life and the gifts he's given me. I was always good at everything, but never the best at anything. I always preferred having fun and enjoying myself and worldly things over anything else. Every time I stumbled somehow, someone came knocking at my door wanting to talk to me about Jesus. 
I didn't realize it then, but I know now God sent people my way to help me. When I felt like I got to a certain point where I was at the top and started doing things on my own again, I was quickly humbled and brought down and always asked God, why? But I never got an answer. A year after I graduated high school, I joined the military and had a successful four years. I don't know why I joined. I just know that's where I was supposed to be. And even though then while I was in, God would still send people my way to help me because I would still stumble. Every time God sent someone my way, I would take them for granted. Everything they told me would go in one year and go out the other. After I finished serving in the military, I experienced what would be the worst two years of my life. For the first time in my life, I felt what depression was, what real sadness is, and what it feels like to be empty. Years of built up and hidden emotions, all trying to find a way out. I had no real purpose and didn't know where I was headed in my life at this point. But I knew that I wasn't going to fill myself up with what I thought was fun. No one realized because my smile is pretty good at hiding it. One day I finally had enough and I got down on my knees and said, all right, God, is this really it? And I remember crying and saying, I surrender myself to you. I don't want to feel sad anymore. Everything I do will be for you. Just tell me what I have to do. The next day, all my urges and addictions that I had were gone. For the first time since I left the military, I was happy. So I kept praying. And for the first time in my life, I really picked up a Bible and I read the word with the purpose of wanting to know who God really is. I saw so many blessings happening in my life within the first two weeks that I know God was really there. My family even saw them happening and were shocked, so shocked that I think they were starting to get scared in a good way, though. I kept praying and praying and I asked, God, please show me the way. Funny enough, I now go to a church called The Way. God has answered all my prayers and sometimes even literally. I know now why I was humbled. I know that without God, I can only get to a certain point before I'm brought down again because without him, I can only get so far. Today, I am blessed with good people around me and because of God, I know where I'm going in my life. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but even then, God would always be knocking at my door and because of it, I got to know our Savior, Jesus Christ, the only one who knows all of our pains, the one who suffered for us so that we could be forgiven. February 7th, the day I first got down on my knees and surrendered myself to be a follower of Christ, and today I am here because of it, sharing my testimony, publicly declaring my faith in Christ Jesus. I am the true vine, and the Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes and he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I in you. Thank you, and glory to God. Amen. Brian. Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you believe that, that he died for you and he paid for all your sins and that there's nothing else that you need to do to please God? No. Are you ready to follow him? Yes. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glorious day. I think at this time we can have the worship team back up while uh, the rest of us get ready. 